Too often, we take our bodies for granted. But under pressure, our bodies can show us how extraordinary they truly are. This complex machine grew out of millions of years of evolution. So intricate, we're still mystified by many of the things going on inside us. A hidden world, but one we can now explore in 3D as never before. Sensations keep us alive, letting us see, hear, and touch our world. They begin beneath our skin. More than a million tiny sensors feed us raw data. 45 miles of nerve fibers let us respond at incredible speed. Our sensations warn us of danger. When we're attacked, they're our first line of defense. They let us perform extraordinary feats. Sensations will even save our lives when we're pushed to the limits. In the teeth of a storm, a pilot guides a seven-ton machine with unerring precision. Achieving this tests the body's sensory system to the extreme. Caught on camera by the Coast Guard, two boys face certain death. Just off the Oregon coast, fierce currents have stranded them, and the tide is rising. We were out maybe a quarter, half a mile, something like that. And uh, we swam for like about an hour trying to get to a rock. I was just getting exhausted. And I just thought I was going to die and I thought I was going to drown. Couldn't believe it. Their only hope is a helicopter. Nine million dollars worth of high technology. But with winds battering the chopper, what matters more to the boys is a mechanism far more complex than any helicopter. Half a million microsensors linked to one of the most sophisticated communication systems on the planet. You'll find it beneath your skin. We're equipped with a forest of amazing devices, including touch receptors, sensitive enough to feel a single beat of a fly's wing. Pilot Matt Gingrich needs all his sensors on full alert to save the boys. We had about 30 knot winds and the, the rocks around us. It's uh, nerve wracking, very nerve wracking. Each square inch of Matt's hands holds 600 touch sensors. Some near the surface record the lightest of contacts. Others lie deeper and measure harder sustained pressure. Through a web of nerves, they fire signals to match brain. In fractions of a second, the brain signals motor nerves, triggering precise movement of his hands on the controls. 4,000 nerves direct each hand as he holds the chopper steady above the rocks. At the same time, Matt's other sensors are hammering him with information. He must read data from a dozen instruments and watch the horizon. He must listen to the crew who can see what's going on below. Amid all this, Matt's sensory system must calculate and balance altitude, speed, and position. That means outperforming any computer on Earth. Easy pass. All right, either way, we'll take up, take home. We still don't have a machine that has the breath to be able to do all of those different things and at the same time instantaneously is assessing the outcome of each one of those things. The speed of signals in Matt's nerves is crucial to his actions. They're right there, you're doing perfect. It keeps the rescue swimmer from crashing into the rocks. Hold, hold it right there. Hold position. Hold. 
What's surprising is the nerve structure that makes the speed possible. Our nerves are bundles of thin cells, some more than three feet long, carrying electrical signals to and from the brain. As insulation protects electrical wiring, a sleeve of fat surrounds key nerves. And it's this fat layer that keeps signals from interfering with one another, so they can rocket around Matt's nervous system at over 250 miles per hour. With the rescue swimmer dangling close to the rocks, this is the trickiest part of the operation. Matt's nerves work so fast and his touch is so precise that he can make tiny adjustments without thinking. He's acting on instinct, depending on sensations working faster than we can think. It's something we all do every day. It lets us make music, create art, and save lives. They risked their life to save mine, and we all got out of there safe, and if it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't be alive right now. This forest of touch sensors allows us to respond instantly to whatever's happening around us. But they're not evenly distributed beneath our skin. Our hands have a hundred times as many sensors per square inch as the back of our legs. They're placed where we need them most. If size went by sensitivity to touch, our bodies would look something like this. Tongue and lips twice as big. The same with hands, fingers and feet. Other senses have different patterns. Sensors for heat are most dense in our fingertips, nose and strangely, our elbows. They play a critical role. When we're pushed to the limits, they might just keep us alive. All over the human body, every second of every day, nerves carry sensations to our brains. Even when we don't realize it, these signals control how our bodies function. When it gets hot, sensors and nerves work together to keep us alive. The deep Australian desert can reach 130 degrees. It's no place to get stranded. But that's what happened to Matthew McGough and his daughter Shannon, more than 100 miles from the nearest town. It's so hot here that a cut of beef left outdoors would roast in less than four hours. Yet Matthew and Shannon are still alive eight days later. Moments after their pickup truck breaks down, their bodies go into action to hold their core temperature at about 98.6 degrees. It's all thanks to hundreds of thousands of tiny heat sensors and the cooling system they trigger. When our skin heats up beyond 93 degrees, sensors signal our brain. Its central thermostat uses other nerves to start the cooling process. One hour later, both of them are sweating profusely. There's no more efficient way to cool the body. Beneath our skin lie over a million tiny sweat glands. When we heat up, our blood vessels dilate, bringing blood and heat to the skin surface more quickly. The sweat glands extract water from the blood and release it into the open. As it evaporates, it cools us. Under ordinary conditions, we produce about two pints of sweat a day. But in extremes, we pump out a lot more. 
This guy's churning out heat as he runs. And what's more, the room temperature is being increased at the same time. The amount of sweat you're producing, but more importantly evaporating, is just enabling you to release the amount of heat and lose the amount of heat for the body that you're producing through exercise. And we're seeing no increase now in the uh, sweat production, which suggests to us that you're sweating at about your maximum rate. The man's near the sweat limit, four pints an hour. But the water has to come from somewhere. The human body is 75% water. To survive, our vital organs need their share of that fluid. Normally, we have enough to spare for the cooling system. Provided we keep the body filled up. After four days in the Australian desert, Matthew and Shannon have run out of water. Losing as little as 